All right guys, so today we're going to be doing a couple tests on this bike. What I like to do when I get an old bike is I want to kind of see if it would run if the carbs were clean. So in order to do that, you got to make sure that you got good compression. You have, um, if the compression is really low, you want to do a leak down and see what's going on there. I'm going to do both of you guys so you can see how that's done. You also want to check for a spark. And, uh, you know, in, in, if you have all that stuff working, if the carbs are clean, at that point it should run. So we're going to make sure that it cranks. We're going to build up some oil pressure before we do any of the testing. We're going to do a compression. We're going to do a leak down. We're going to check for spark. And uh, when that's all done, you know, we'll, we'll start tearing in even more. But uh, you want to make sure all this stuff is good before you start cutting it all up. Because if you start cutting the bike all up and you get it all back together again, and that's when you check all this stuff, you may have some more problems that you should have taken care of when the engine was out of the bike. So we're going to get in, uh, get into all that stuff and make sure it's all working good. And if it's working good, we're good to go. We're going to start digging in. All right, so stay tuned. Here we go. All right, guys, so I'm going to start pulling this thing apart. The seat comes off. It has these levers right here. You're going to need the key. Put the key in here, turn it. These levers come up. You push them both up, and it unlocks. There's one there. There's one there. I took off two 12-millimeter uh, bolts right here for the seat, one on each side. Okay, one there, one on the other side in the same place. And then I'm going to take so the seat will come off. The... Um, there you go, the rear comes off right there. Seat comes off. We're going to take the tank off, and I'm going to go ahead and hook it up and do a um, compression check. So I'm going to pull the uh, plugs out, the plug wires off right here, and uh, we're going to see what we got for compression. All right, guys, so here we are. I have um, power cables hooked up to it. I got the key in the arm position. The light is on. We're in the run. It got both plugs out so it'll crank. All I want to do is build up some oil pressure here. This is the first time the start button has been hit in the uh, couple years it's been sitting, so let's see what happens. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so there we go. I wanted to build up some pressure. Now I'm going to hook up the compression gauge. And uh, let's see what kind of compression we got, man. I'm excited. Stand by. All right, so now I'm going to just check it and see if we got a spark. Oh, yeah. Let's try this one over here. Grab that and push that rusty spark plug in there. This is the original. I have new spark plugs, but I'm just curious to see if this old rusty spark plug will start. These are the older NGKs. They were always seemed to pretty, be pretty good. Amazing. Look how crusty that spark plug is. That thing sparks. All right, cool. Let's do our compression check. All right, guys. So for the uh, compression test, you want to leave the valve in there. All right. This is a compression test hose. And here we go. It's the left cylinder. Do it again. One more time. All right, so we're looking at, we got 150. Pretty good. All right, and here's the right cylinder. We'll just crank it until it stops going up. One next, do it again. All right, that's good. We'll do it one more time. All right, good. So we're at 150 on both cylinders. It's pretty doggone good. I'm, I'm very happy with that. This is a compression test hose, but when I'm using it for a leak down, I want the air to be able to go through the opposite direction than it normally does. So when this is a uh, compression that screws in, the air is coming this way, coming up the hose. We're going to push it down the hose, so you got to take the core out of it. So just a regular uh, core tool like this, I'm going to take that out. All right, core is removed. All right, so that's the bolt we're going for right above, right above the clutch cover. It's not that far down in there or anything. It's not buried. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. All right, so what we're looking at here is in the ins inspection port here on the right side of the engine. And what we want for the uh, right side, I'm sorry, the left side cylinder is TL. All right, and for the right cylinder, it's going to be TR for top left and top right. 
and there's a little tiny tab you can see there on the left side of the picture at the bottom of the T and that's where you want to put that line so I'm going to go ahead and just move it just a tiny bit and we're going to hook up some air to it and we're going to check out our leak down alright I'm, I'm using a snap-on um, leak tester here and this is the MT324 and uh, I like these uh, Motion Pro makes one um, a lot smaller just kind of the gauge and a dial and your line hookups but um, what you do with this one here is you set it up and if you look closely here it says do not exceed 60 pounds All right. and for a leak down test you really don't know you don't need to go much higher than that 60 pounds Oops, sorry. There. there it is. Do not exceed. So I'm going to put mine at 60 pounds so, uh, you know, uh, shops will tell you you got to run between 60 and 80 pounds for a leak down. Sometimes they'll tell you 100. 60 pounds is just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to the uh, airline, and I'm going to adjust the knob right here, all right, which is the regulator. I'm going to make sure that it stays right uh, right on zero. I'm going to hit air a couple times with just an um, uh, air nozzle attached to it. Just squeeze it a couple times to make sure it should, it should drop and then come right back down to zero. And if it doesn't, I'm going to adjust this a little bit so I can do it a couple times. It always comes back to zero. And then I'm going to hook up to the cylinder. All right, so let me get this set up. All right, you guys can see the gauge right there. I have the airline going to it. And then I just have a, uh, just an air nozzle running. This is the part I'm going to be hooking up to the cylinder. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to squeeze it and let some air out and make sure it drops back down to zero. All right, and we're getting it right back down to zero. It's a tiny bit different, so I'm going to go ahead and just adjust it a little bit here. There we are, dead on zero. Do it again. Right, and we're looking good. So this point right here, I'm going to hook it up to the cylinder. Right now we're looking at, if you look at that, that's my leak down right there. I'm at 8 PSI. All right. So that's the 8 PSI leak down, and I can hear it a little bit coming out of the breather if you really listen on hard through the um, through the port in the front where you rotate this, the um, crankshaft. I can hear it slightly there, so that's going to be passing the rings, but at 8%, 8 that's excellent. So uh, you don't have to worry about that at all. So if it starts to get up by, you know, 12 to 15%, uh, more towards 15, you got to be concerned about it. But, you know, 8% leak down, that's no problem. That's a good engine right there. All right, let's move on to the next one. And here we are set up for the right cylinder, top dead center. All right, let's see what we get out of this one. There you go, we're at eight again, maybe nine. It's like right between eight and 10, so. And remember, when we compression checked these, we had 150 PSI out of both of them. So, this is a good engine. This is ready to go. So, if you get a bike, you know, you, you want to, these are the things that you want to check. Compression, leak down. If you know you got that, and you know you got a good spark, then it's going to be your carbs. You get your carbs set up right, and uh, it should run. This bike right now, the way it sits, if I clean these carbs up right now on the bench, this thing will be running. But, we're going to start ripping this thing down, so... But anyway guys, that's how you check the, uh, the health of an engine when you get it. I like to do that before I start ripping the thing apart, just so I have an idea if it's going to need something. But this engine right here, I'm going to clean this thing up, and uh, I'm not going to do rings or nothing on it. Just, it doesn't need it. There's no point doing it with, all, with, with these kind of engine checks. It's doing great. Guys, if you go on to uh, YouTube, you can find out how to make these leak down gauges um, out of double gauges. But Motion Pro makes one just like the one I showed you. Uh, with um, it's just it's a lot smaller. It's about this big. It's got your gauge on one side. It's got a dial, and it's got your airline runner in the one you run to the cylinder. And you set up the same way. Uh, set your compressor up at a good gauge, uh, at a good pressure where it can hold. Plug it into the line. Make sure it stays on zero. Adjust the dial till it stays on zero, and you hook it up to the cylinder. It's real simple. Uh, I like those Motion Pro ones. They're a lot, a lot smaller, easy to handle and stuff. But this is an old school one that I've had for a while. Works out great. Hey, and for all you naysayers out there, I want to tell you that I did this leak down test at 100 PSI, and it was exactly the same. 
So for those of you that are going to post, say, ah, oh, you got to do it at 100 PSI for it to work. It's not true. I just did it right here. You saw me do it at 60 PSI. With this type of gauge, you can set this thing up, and it was no problem. Got the same exact leak down I got at 100 PSI when I did it uh, yesterday just to test it out. So uh, I did it at 90, I did it at 100, and now I did it at 60, and always got 9.5% uh, leak down. So don't believe everything you hear out there. Listen to the gauge. It's telling you what to do. All right, so guys, if you're looking forward to seeing what I do to this bike, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stuff and work I'm doing on this GL500. Guys, till next time, it's Tepco Cycle Repair.